Hey guys, welcome back. So in our last video, we made it so that we can um, die and then respawn when we touch these enemies. So we've got the frog, and we've got the eagle, and we've got this out of bounds area. But the next thing we need to do is make a death animation. So we are going to go to our animator, or animation tab, and click our player. And under idle anim, we're going to click the drop down and click create new clip. And then go to, back to our assets folder under animations, player, and then defeated anim. Okay, so then if we go to our project, we can go back to our player under hurt. Oh, actually, I saw this when I originally was building the project, but then I found another animation that I preferred instead. It might have been under something else. Um, okay, so it was actually under this FX folder under uh, enemy death. So I'm going to use this as the player death instead of the player hurt because I just think it looks cooler. So we're just going to make one of these uh, every six milliseconds just so it happens pretty quick. So 6, 12, 18, 24, 30. And we're only going to play this animation once, so we don't need to put the first one back in there like we have done before. Now if we go back to our game and we click play. Cool. So now if we go back to our animator, you're going to see we have another connector down here called defeated anim. If we right click any state and click make transition, then we can transition to here and we're going to transition there when our state equals I don't remember what our state was um, oh we just haven't created one so we're gonna have another one called defeated equal to four so now if we go back to uh, unity we can say if state equals four then we're gonna transition to our defeated anim um, something's going on there we go if state equals four, then we're going to go to settings and get rid of this fixed duration, get rid of the can transition to self. And now let's see what happens when we run that. So we actually have to code it. We have change animation already set up as a function though. So if we go to player defeated, we can just call change animation to animations dot defeated. We'll wait for Unity to save those changes, and then we'll click play. Okay, so as you can see, it is working. However, it is playing the animation multiple times, uh, which is good for most animations like walking, but we only want it to play once. So now we have to set it so that it doesn't loop. To do this, you're gonna go to your project folder, assets, animations, player, and find this defeated anim, and you're gonna see this loop time, uncheck that. And then click the play button again and you'll notice it only plays it once however you're going to notice that it leaves this last sprite so we don't want that to happen okay so before we created keyframes by dragging images into these little spots so the images represent what the player is going to look like um, within that certain time limit uh, but what we can actually do is click the record button right here and record exactly the state of the player and it will create a keyframe that looks like whatever the player looks like. So let's say we set the player's rotation to be something else and we click record, it would record a rotated keyframe. So what we're going to do is we're going to click 36 because that uh, is the next increment, six extra milliseconds. And then we're going to click the record button and we're going to disable the sprite renderer. So as you can see, when you click that, it will automatically create a keyframe. And basically what that keyframe is, is just a version of the player where the sprite renderer is disabled. 
Now, if we go back to here, the very beginning and click it, then we can see that the sprite render is enabled. So that's good. So it re-enables the sprite render as soon as we get to the first keyframe. Now, if we click play, as you can see, it looks like it's working, but let's click the record button and then click play and see if it works. Okay, so the player disappears and then as soon as the time runs out, they respawn under the idle animation. Okay, so our sandbox is getting a little bit bigger now. So the next thing that we're gonna create is a timer. So once the time expires, the player uh, will become immediately defeated. So this is pretty easy. We're gonna to go to our game master. We're gonna have a variable, a public bool running timer. And then we're gonna have public float current time and then public float max time, which will be the time that the player has to beat the level. So let's set it to like 50. So in start, we're gonna set current time equals max time and then running timer equals true. So then in our update, we're going to do current time minus equals time dot delta time. So we've been adding time a lot before, but now we're just subtracting it. So it's starting from 50 and it's going down. And then we're gonna say if current time is less than or equal to zero. And you're probably wondering, why are we doing the less than? Why don't we just do zero? Uh, and the reason why is because Unity can't calculate things to an exact decimal place. So for example, the number could go to like 0 0.7, 0 0.3, and then negative 0 0.5. Like it doesn't reach uh, every millisecond because milliseconds just happen too quick for it to process. So it could never actually hit zero. It could go below zero down to like negative one. So we do less than equal to zero just to make sure that if it is less than zero, our time is out. So then we're gonna set running timer to be false. And then this is where we want to defeat our player. So we're gonna have a public player controller player. We're gonna call player dot player defeated. And then we're also going to debug dot log our timer so that we can see it right now. Now, if we go back to Unity, you'll see in our public section of the script, we have access to our player. So if we drag our player in, it'll automatically put in the player controller. Our max time is 50. We're just gonna bring this down to like 10 for testing purposes. If we click play, hopefully those numbers are coming out in the console. Awesome. I guess we didn't need to use the console since we have it over here, but that's fine. So let's see what happens when the player Okay, so player defeated. So now we're going to have to respawn our player because basically what's happening right now is every time the player respawns, it's calling player defeated over and over again because the timer is still less than zero. So we're gonna have a public void restart level. And we're gonna set current time equal to max time. Then we'll set running time equal to true. And that's all we're gonna really do right now. Now it might almost seem like, why don't we call restart level right down here? Uh, but that's actually a bad idea because then we would start running the timer while the player is still in their death animation. And that's not really fair. So we're gonna call restart level on the game manager as soon as the player respawns. So if we go back to uh, respawn player under player controller, we can type in, oh, we don't have access to our game manager yet. So we're gonna declare public game master, game master. And then you should never really be doing this. You should always be dragging things in, in the inspector, but I'm just going to do this so I can show you that it does work. If I type in game master equals game object dot find game master. This code game object dot find will search through all of our game objects and it will find one that equals that string, so game master. 
And then, so we have our game master object, but we also have our game master script that is attached to our game master object. So then we have to do dot get component game master. And that will work. I'm going to leave it there for now, but this game object dot find takes a lot of time for you need to do. We won't notice it right now because it's like a difference in milliseconds. But if you had a huge level with like thousands of objects, this could make things lag out. So we're going to delete this since we don't want to use it. And then we'll go back to our inspector. And then we'll wait for game master to pop up here. And then we'll just drag it in. Okay. So now we have access to our game master script inside of our player controller. So now if we go back down to respawn player, we can type in game master dot restart level. And now if we click play, we'll just see if this works. So ideally, as soon as the current time runs out, it stops and then we respawn, and then it resets the time. So, it worked. It did keep making the time move down before it responded, but that shouldn't actually make a difference. Um, oh, we wanna do if running timer, and then put all of this code inside of it. There, that way it will only subtract time off current time if it needs to. That way we don't waste resources. So then we're gonna actually put it in the UI. So we haven't done any UI yet, but it's really easy. We're gonna right click uh, an empty spot here and go down to UI and then click text. We're gonna click this rec transform that says right top and it's gonna pop up these options. We're gonna hold shift and alt and click the top right thing in this grid. So that's going to align our text to the top so that's good. Then we want to increase the size of our text to like 20. So this is going to be the time. So like 10. Um, now I'm noticing the background isn't covering everything. So just to make this a bit easier, because we're always going to have a background, we're going to copy and paste our background and then just move its X axis over so that we can duplicate it and just drag it beside it little bit more. Great. So they perfectly blend together, which is awesome. So now we have this text and we're going to want to bring it all the way over to the right and then down a little bit. Okay. So now we want to make its font size way bigger because it's still very small. Let's try something like 34. Now, as you can see, it disappears. And the reason why this is happening is because it's getting too big for its container. So if we go to scene, you'll notice the time's gone. And it's because UI, you have to scroll out really far. And you'll see this giant square now. That's where the UI is. So we're going to drag it over here. And then we're just going to make the space really big. It won't increase the size of the text, but it'll allow the text to get bigger. So we type in like 34, you can see that makes the number a lot bigger, a lot more clear. And we're going to have something like time 10, and then it will count down to like 9, 8, 7. And we want to make sure that it stays left aligned, even if the digits go down to like one digit, if it goes down to nine. So make sure this left aligned is selected. Then we're going to just drag it a little bit more to the right again. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now all we need to do is go back to our game master, have public text. Oh, it's not gonna let you type in text by default. You have to include it. So type in public text, wait for this red line to pop up. Then it'll say the name text does not exist in the current context, show potential fixes. And using unityengine.ui. If this doesn't pop up for you, that's fine. Just type in using unityengine.ui at the top and it will just import it for you. Then we're gonna type in timer text. And then we're going to set 
our timer text to be equal to um, time, whoops, time plus current time. We're getting an, oh, so we're getting an error. We have to do uh, timer text dot text because our text itself has a bunch of different properties. We have to access this text one. Okay, so let's load the game. Actually, that's not gonna work because if we go back to our game master, we haven't set our timer text yet. This is really easy, we just drag it in. So now our game master has access to this UI. Now if we click play, you're gonna notice it is going off the screen and that's because we have all these decimals. We don't actually even want the decimals, so we're gonna use code in order to get rid of them. We're gonna go back to our script and instead of this plus current time, we're going to type in system.math.round. Current time to zero decimals. So it's just going to make it a whole number. Now let's click play again. Okay. And as you can see, the time is now showing. So we'll wait a few seconds make sure it's still all good. 